I saw what was then called the Nibam Estate, I, I couldn't believe its beauty, and and it was big. It was you know 1,700 acres with beautiful mountains and a lake and a uh, hundred acres of a uh, vineyard and this uh, 1880 Queen Anne house that was uh, the queen of the Napa Valley and uh, began to learn the history of what had been almost a mythical winery called Inglenook. I had recently gotten some uh, claim because I had just done the uh, Godfather. I was about 31 years old and we were moving our family to live there. And I got a visit from Robert Mondavi, you know, who was to me a famous, important uh, icon of the wine industry. And so I was, you know, so touched that he would come. And he said, I'm coming to greet you. He says, because I want you to know that you have bought the jewel of the Napa Valley. And, and once again, I started to, you know, have uh, an education as to what Inglenook had been. So we went and got a bottle of, I think it was 1895 Inglenook, and opened it. And we took the cork out of the bottle. Just the aroma filled the room, and we we drank it for Napa, among the oldest wine. And uh, Bandavi start jumping up and down enthusiastically. Says, See, I told you, if you take Napa Valley and you age it, it's as good as anything in the world. And as a young person, I was very, uh, uh, I felt I was there at a historical moment, you know, and then so I got in my head the stream of making a wine that could be as good as anything in the world. If Mr. Mondavi says it's possible, you know, I thought, well, it must be possible. Gustav Niebaum was like one of the wealthiest men in the world, and he was young, and he had a great uh, uh, interest in wine. He had traveled all over Europe, he had visited all the great wine regions. I mean, he could have gone and bought all the first growths at that time, all of them. Then Niebaum instead took his vast wealth and knowledge and did a lot of research and bought a piece of what he felt was the perfect location in the Napa Valley, which was there in Rutherford. Using his knowledge, he built a chateau, a wine facility with the most modern ideas, and he brought his wines to Paris in the late 1800s, and, you know, people really suddenly said, my God, what is this place, the Napa Valley? And that's what established Rutherford as, like, you know, the Medoc of the Napa Valley. Inglenook was very beloved uh, property and, and company. In fact, if you pull a string on the, any winery in the Napa Valley, it will lead you back to Inglenook. Unfortunately, he died in uh, 1909, and his widow wasn't sure what to do with this uh, beautiful estate, and ultimately she brought in some people. And then there was prohibition, so all American uh, fine wines were really traumatized by prohibition. 20 years where you're not allowed to sell, sell wine. Families like my own were allowed to make two barrels in their basement and they used to talk about how much fun it was to squish the grapes and somehow in my mind uh, I thought when I had boys, oh it'd be fun if every year we just made wine and gave wine to the family for Christmas. That's where the idea came from for me. Because of what was done to Inglenook, the way it was dismembered and buildings put right in front of the chateau, that Napa adopted very strict rules of what you could do and what you couldn't do. And in our country, we're beginning to get the idea of historical heritage and that it's something to protect. The heritage is everything, the story is everything. And 
it's it's one thing to say, oh, I have the winery that once was Inglenook, and quite another to say, I have Inglenook. Uh, although people said, oh, the name has been trashed. I say, yeah, but people still pay thirty thousand dollars for one bottle of it. So how trashed is that, you know? It's all about the grapes we grow and the agriculture. Certainly when we make the wine, depending on the expertise of the winemaker and his palate and sensibility, but it's the fruit that he has to work with. I wanted someone who would be just the winemaker of Inglenook and uh, be dedicated to it. And uh, Philippe Basco, who had made the wine at the Chateau Margaux for 20 some odd years, turned out to be our winemaker and, and ultimately the state manager did come to join us. But he comes to Napa with, you know, open, open mind and he didn't know Napa Valley and he has to discover what is unique about the Napa and what is unique about the Inglenook. This is a work that's measured in decades. Whereas I think in my lifetime, I'll see the renovation and the, and the emergence of Inglenook as the great American uh, winery. Uh, for it to really reach its goal uh, could take 20 years, you know, so. But I feel very um, confident that my children who were raised in that home, they all went to school, their friends are all from the Napa Valley and they love the property as they should and their children now love it. So I know uh, that the Inglenook tradition will be passed on within our family as, of course, the great wineries of the world have been passed on in certain, in certain families for hundreds of years. And it's my dream that that will happen.